you can see this. Uh, here's one ATM right there. Uh, and we have that, let's say, okay, and here's zero, say intersect right there. That's the, uh, uh, what's it called, the melting point of ice, okay. At the top of a mountain where atmospheric pressure is lower, so we're going to drop down a little bit. Uh, let's take a look at both of those. So we'll have a line like right here. Is that okay? Just a little bit lower. Let's just take it a lot lower so we can see it. Somewhere down here. Okay, can you see how the boiling point will go a little bit lower? Is that okay? Uh, and the... Let's see, did that saxophone point point? Oh no, this is just the melting point. What's going to happen to the melting point, everybody? It's, it's going to go in. They're both going to go this direction. So the boiling point will go lower, the melting point will go up just a little bit. So that was, what answer? B. Yes, you're next. Oh, you want to take back your question? Okay, you took it back. Yes. Oh, spring, no, spring 2011, number 9. Spring 11. Number 9. Is that this one right here? Yeah. Okay. We got a solution of two. It has a vapor pressure of this. The vapor pressure of pure carbon is this. What's the vapor pressure of pure carbon test? It's the same sort of thing as what we just did. So let's say we have CS2 and CCL4. So let's just call this one A and that one B. Is that okay? So P total equals P A plus P B. Is that all right? Or B. And then that's X A, P A naught, pure pressure of A, plus X B, P B naught. Is that okay? All right, let's see what we got. P total, let so me write this. P total is given. That is uh, 274 in the question. Uh, let's see, the vapor pressure of pure carbon disulfide, that's A, is 360. Okay? Uh, what's the vapor pressure of this? This is the one we want to know. All right? And then let's see how much of each do we have. There's uh, 50 grams of this one. And the other one is, oh, 50 grams of this as well. So I've got to find the mole fraction of this. Is that okay? Change it to moles. Stick that in here, and I only have one thing to solve for. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Who's next? Yes? Um, uh, spring 2012, number 11. Spring 12. That's page 18. Are we talking about this one right here? Yeah. Okay. So number 11, page 18, it tells you that there's negative 50.38 kilojoules per mole and that there's 137 kilojoules of heat for this combustion. So it's this many per mole, but if we had this much, how many moles do we have? This is just going to be a conversion question. So you go 137 really divided by 50.38, the kilojoules kilojoules per mole. It does all end up being moles. That's your number. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah these are easy. Good point. Thank you. It's so shocked how easy this is. Yes. Oh. If you're still thinking, we'll come back. No, I Okay. Quickly. Okay. Okay, I'm going to come back to you. Yes. scenarios where no normality applies, acids, bases, there's others as well, but I would only ask you for acid base if I ask you that. Okay, yes? Okay, page 26. 
Uh, oh, the slope of the fusion curve, fusion again is, oh, did I tell you? Oh, yeah, solid liquid, is negative for which compound? Water, yeah, that's, it's a unique characteristic of water that's actually negative. The rest are typically positive. That's it. Okay, yes? 14. Okay, number 12 on page 14. This one right here? Yeah, no? Oh, yes, okay. Uh, this is a bomb counter We have delta U. Calculate delta H for the reaction. Okay. You know this formula, right? Okay, but this is a reaction, so I'm going to change it to this. Delta H is given. Let me find the question again. Delta H is given. No, no, delta U is given, right? Uh, R is a constant. T is given. Delta N you can get from the reaction. There we go. Oh, oh, do you use like Q reaction and Q cal and things like that because it's a bomb calorimeter? Is that your question? <laughs> oh, yeah, that part's a little confusing. Yeah, that you're right. The size of the bomb calorimeter doesn't change. So the overall system, let me draw it like this. This calorimeter, delta B is equal to zero. That's correct. However, that's not what they're kind of talking about. The reaction is happening inside the bomb calorimeter, and that could have an expansion, but typically not a compression for combustion. We'll have an expansion, and that's what they're talking about in there. So you need to be careful. They mentioned the word bomb calorimeter, but they're talking about reaction happening inside of it. Yes? OK, delta N for this problem specifically right here. This, that's a good question. First of all, is this reaction balanced, everybody? Let's zoom in so you can all see it. Is the reaction balanced? Remember to always check. Yes? Okay, I'll believe you. Oh, it's not? What's not balanced then? Okay, that was a JK. It is balanced. Okay. There's two nitrogens on this side. Okay. So, what is delta N here, anybody? What value do you get when you find delta N for this question? Yeah, and what number is that? I'm looking for an actual number here. Grab your calculator if you need it. What do you get? Point 0.5 is what I got. Is that okay? Anybody not get point 0.5? Should I explain that? Okay. 1 plus 1 minus 1.5. One okay, one more time. 1 plus 1, that's 2, minus 1.5. Why not water? Huh? Why didn't you count water? Why would I not have water? It's a liquid. Delta N, EV equals NRT, gases only. That, can't count that one, can't count that one. Good? Good, good. You asked this before the exam. Excellent. Okay, who's next? Yes? Yes? Okay, I believe this is page 20. Are you talking about this question right here? Goal? The goal question. Okay. Uh, how, uh, how, what's the number of atoms per unit cell for goal? Anybody? Four. Why? Base center cube. Coordination number. 12. And you know that because? 
base center cubic. Okay? What's the volume per unit cell? Did you want to do all the parts? Okay. Volume per unit cell. The length would be face diagonal or cube diagonal? Anybody? Face. So that's r squared of 8 for the face. R is 144 picometers. So that'd be 144 picometers times the square root of 8. If you wanted, somebody asked me, can I convert first? Yes, you can. Let's just do that so you can see it. 10 to the 12 picometers per meter. And then there's 1 meter per 100 centimeters. Then I would cube this number, and that's the answer for part B. Part C, what's the mass per unit cell? The mass would be 4 atoms per unit cell times, uh, really divided by Avogadro's number, to change it to moles, and then I need the molar mass of gold, that's 196.97 from the periodic table, and there we go, that's the answer to part C. And then the answer to part D, what's the density? You take mass and divide by volume. So part C divided by part B. Is that okay? Cool, who's next? Yes? Uh, page 26, okay, I think you're talking about this long one right here. Consider a flask containing two components, A and B, where A and B are different compounds. Uh, if AA represents the interaction between two molecules of A, BB between uh, two molecules of B, and AB between A and B, then the solution AB can form in all the following situations when the, okay, now we got to go through. So when will A B form? So not A with A, and not B with B, but A with B, okay? So when will they mix together? Okay. Uh, oh, and will happen in all the following situations except, so we're going to try to find the one where it does not happen. Okay, right? When will that not happen? When the enthalpy of solution equals zero, uh, that means it's an ideal solution, and the solution will form in that scenario, and that's typically non-polar molecules, and generally for, uh, what are they called? Hydrocarbons, or organic molecules that are non-polar. Okay, B, forces of attraction of A, B are much weaker than those of A, A, and B, B. So that means A, B, that force of attraction is not favorable. Essentially, it's weak compared to when A goes with A or B with B. That would be a scenario, so B would be a, a likely candidate. Okay, let's look at C. Forces of attraction between A and B are slightly weaker than those between A and B, B. Okay, comparatively between B and C, B is the worst case scenario so far. All right, D, force of attraction of A and B exceed those of A and B, B. D will definitely form. E, force of attraction of the same type, are of the same type and same strength. They're totally equal. So of all those, B is the worst case scenario. Okay, cool. Next, yes. Three on the same page. This one? Okay, also page 26. Where well, a liquid's in equilibrium with its vapor in a closed container, uh, the change in temperature will not change the pressure of the contain in the container. Uh, the rate at which molecules uh, from the liquid phase enter the gas phase exactly equals the rate at which molecules in the gas phase pass into the liquid phase. Uh, the amount of gas in the container must exactly equal the amount of liquid. Okay, C is totally ridiculous. <laughs> okay. uh, it's definitely A or B right now. Uh, we'll look at them closely in a moment. The vapor will uh, gradually change back to liquid state. That is, no vapor will be left. Not necessarily. That could happen, but not necessarily. E, molecules cannot go from the liquid phase to the gas phase because the amount of liquid in the container is constant. No, that's not necessarily true either. There's equilibrium. They're going back and forth all the time. So uh, B, oh, I just said B. They're going back and forth all the time. Between from 
liquid to gas and gas to liquid all the time. Okay, does the change in temperature will not change the pressure in the container? Uh, no, uh, the pressure in the container can keep going up and up almost indefinitely until you get to the critical point. That's the same as, remember we did the pressure cooker example? The pressure can keep going up and up, uh, potentially. So, uh, yeah, so it doesn't look like A will work. Yeah. Okay. Yes? Can you find the mole fraction of an ionic compound? Um, do you split it up? If it's like an aqueous solution, do you split up the ions? Okay, if you have an ionic compound and you're trying to find the mole fraction, it depends what you're trying to find the mole fraction of. <coughs> if it's the entire compound, then you keep them all together. And typically that's what we would do. So you wouldn't Unless you were specifically asked what's the mole fraction of this ion, mm -hmm. then you could split them up. But uh, we wouldn't generally have to do that. Yeah, good. Yes, way in the back.
There's four types of vapor pressure problems. Okay, this has to do with pressure. Is that okay? Vapor pressure. Okay. Four types. Uh, one type if you have one component, one compound, and at one state, one temperature, one pressure, etc. Ideal gas law. If you have one component, two states, two temperatures, say two pressures, Posh's trap law. If you have two or more components or compounds, one state, that's Raoul Tordon's law. That's not this scenario though. Our scenario has just water. That's it, one compound. So this couldn't apply in our scenario. Uh, this one, where you use intermolecular forces, that's two or more components as well. So these two can't apply for sure. Okay, so it's one of these two, and if you read the problem, uh, it's at one, one pressure, one temperature, you've got a volume, you've got a mass that you can convert to moles, this is the ideal gas law. Is that all right? Okay, we did one really similar in class, right before we did the Clausius flat law example. Okay, in this case, is it okay that I know the temperature, R is a constant, uh, the pressure is given, 48.2 torr, you change it to atmospheres, and I know the volume of the flask. So I'm going to solve for this. Is that okay? Uh, yeah. We're assuming that the liquid level is really small compared to the total volume of the glass. It was two liters in this case. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and that's an, assumption, that's an assumption in the problem. Uh, you solve for N. And then this one wants the percent of by mass, the mass percent. And so you're going to go 100 times the total mass, 0 0.90 grams. That's the total mass in the problem. And then this mole is when you change it to mass. So you'll find, find mass here. Uh, and I'll put a little g for gas. Is that OK? And you go 0.9 minus the mass of the gas. Is that okay? That will give you the mass uh, fraction, really. Yeah, the mass percent that remains liquid. This is the mass that became a gas. If you subtract them, that's enough that they're the liquid. Okay? Yeah, the vapor pressure, that's this number right here. Remember, pressure and vapor pressure are the same thing. The pressure is the pressure of the vapor. That's the only prior pressure that exists for, for us. Yes, Wilbur. Um, same test, number 13. Same test, number 13. This one, right? What is the vapor pressure? What kind of problem is this one, anybody? Remember, I showed you this thing here. How many components do I have? Two. So that means it's either a Raoult's law problem or an intermolecular force problem. So which one is it? Yeah, intermolecular force has no numbers with it. It's just which one has the higher rate of pressure. Uh, so this has to be a Raoult's law. You have two components and math is involved. So, uh, do you want me to still solve? Yeah, okay, so, in this case, uh, we want to know the vapor pressure of a solution, P total, equals PA, there's two components, I'll call them A and B, one's water, one's uh, glucose. XA, PA naught, plus XB, PB naught. Plug it in. The pure pressures, let's see if we have those. The vapor pressure of water, it gives me the pure pressure of water. So let's, let's call A, let's make this glucose. 
let's call B water. Okay? So I know the pure pressure of B. It gives that to me in the problem. It says 23.8 millimeters of mercury. Uh, let's see what, oh. Oh, it's even easier than what the equation I wrote out. Uh, let's see what else it gives me. It gives me the mass of both, both of these. It gives me the mass of A, which is the glucose, which is 130 grams. And it gives me the mass of B, the water, which is 430 grams. I need to convert both of these to moles. Is that okay? Over? No. Okay. And then let's just double check what it wants to know. It wants to know the vapor pressure of the solution. This is actually easier than the equation I wrote out. You don't need this whole equation. Because, let me ask, let me draw a picture. Here, there's water in here, right? And I dissolve glucose in here. This was actually also have been a multiple choice concept question before. Okay, the, so the glucose is the brown dots, is that okay? I'm dissolving it in there. All right, the vapor above the solution is made up of what component or components? So what's the vapor composed of? Okay, water, anything else? Or only water? Is glucose above the solution? No. How do you know that? That's true. Only water is above the solution. Why is that? This was a multiple choice question where I just used the word shorter. I think this past, last year's exam or the year before, or something like that, previously. Why is glucose not above? Yeah, it's not necessarily a, a liquid. So if I mix two liquids together, those liquids can have a vapor pressure. But think of an uh, example you might be more familiar with. If I add salt to water and I make a salt water mixture, that salt is not going to go into the gas phase because it's a solid. So anytime I add a solute, which would be a solid, like a sugar or a salt, that's not going to vaporize. Is that okay? So solids will not vaporize uh, only if I mix two liquids together. So why is this easier? Because really all we want is PA, or no, PB, if that's the only one that can vaporize. And that's why we're only given PB, not in the question. You don't have the pure pressure of sugar because there is none. Is that okay? So XB, can you find that by yourself? Is that okay? It's just the moles of water divided by the total moles. Okay, there we go. Yes? So oh, one more thing. So distinguish between I'm mixing two liquids together, I'm putting a solid solute dissolved in a liquid. This is a solid solute in a liquid as compared to I'm mixing two liquids together. The example that you're going to see in Tuesday in class are two liquids together. An example we did just previously was two liquids together. Okay. Uh, yes, on this? Okay. Is it possible to give us like two liquids in a solid or multiple solids in the solution? It would be, uh, the question is can you have two, two liquids and a couple solids or what have you? That's possible. It's kind of an unlikely problem. More likely you would get like three liquids together, if anything. It would be solved in the same method. By the way, I just found it. Sweet Avenue Park Light. Okay. Cool. All right. Who's next? That was you, yeah. Page 17, page 17. Quarter number two. Uh, nitrogen gas uh, has Henry's law constant right here. 
uh, the bend results from this being uh, rapidly released, so that's a scuba diving issue, which the following would be a good substitute for nitrogen in order to make the bends less severe. All I'm looking for in this question is another compound that's really similar to nitrogen. So there's a couple things I'm looking for. Which one has a similar K value and is a compound that's not reactive? Okay, because I'm breathing it in my scuba diving tank because it's acting as a diluent or diluting the oxygen. So, uh, of the numbers, which one do I like the best? Or which ones are possibilities? A and C. A and C are pretty similar to this number. Okay, why might I prefer A, this molecule, over this molecule? This will react and this is inert. Yeah, H2, it can react with oxygen to form. Well, it would be an exothermic reaction, a combustion type reaction. So I definitely prefer helium over that, just because of the reactors. That's why the Hindenburg went down, hydrogen gas. Okay, cool, who's next? Okay, and I'll take maybe one, two more questions. So yours and one more. Yes. Wait, for the last question, why do you not want it to react? You're breathing it. It's in your scuba tank. You do not want your tank to explode or react with anything in your body. So the most inert ones are A and B. Okay? So uh, those are highly preferable as far as the molecules go. Uh, see, this is going in your scuba tank divers. They have their tank on the back. So yes, definitely don't take anything reactive in there. OK, last question. Yes, Lauren, you win. 2010, 15. Page 15? Um, 2010. Oh, OK, I think I know what you're talking about here. Sorry, let me see if I can find it. Henry's Law also? Okay, you guys really like Henry's Law here. Uh, this one right here? Okay, we've got nitrogen and oxygen determine the solubility of nitrogen. Okay, so in this scenario, I'm giving you information about two things, but only asking about one. So we've got a lot of unneeded information here. Okay? So Henry's Law... We're really going to do a sample calculation next time, but that's C equals KP. K is given in the question for nitrogen. That's the 8.20 times 10 to the negative 7 molal per millimeter of mercury. Is that okay? Okay. And then P, in this case, that's 760 millimeters of mercury as your pressure, and then let me get my calculator out, or my phone in my case. Okay, so you have to first, I'm going to, I'll just show you here. First, I'm going to, does this show up? Yeah. Okay, sweet. First, I'm going to multiply those two numbers times, and I can because the units here match. Is that all right? Okay. Uh, I gotta do this. Times uh, 8.2 B7 negative. Okay? So that's my first step. Um, and then that's uh, for the total pressure exerted in the system. Is that okay? So I only have how much of nitrogen? 80%? And let's see if that's a possible answer here. That's C. Is that okay? If I was asked for oxygen, the difference would be I'd use the oxygen K and I'd multiply by 0.2. Is 